Okay, so uh, in this video we will be seeing how to formulate a LPP. LPP stands for Linear Programming Problems. Now this question is given to us that a company produces two products, alpha and beta. One unit of alpha requires 15 machine hours and 10 labor hours. And one unit of beta requires 5 machine hours and 25 labor hours. Total availability of machine hours and labor hours is 3750 respectively. Profit per unit of alpha and beta is rupees 100 and 150 respectively. Formulate as LPP. So this given data we want to convert in the format of LPP. Now the format of LPP contains three components. First of which is called decision variables. So now we will write LPP formulation of this. First component of formulation is called decision variables. Decision variables are represented by x, no, x1, x2, etc. Okay. So now see how to identify the decision variables. The decision variables are generally the products which are given in the question. Now here there are two products given in the question, alpha and beta. So it means our variables are alpha and beta. So we will say x1 is equal to number of units of alpha and x2 is equal to number of units of beta. Now why they are called x is because at the start of the solution we do not know the values of x1 and x2. We do not know how many units of alpha and beta we are going to manufacture. That, that they are the unknowns. So that is why these decision variables are represented by x. So x stands for unknown value or unknown quantity. When we solve the problem in the end, we get the values of x1 and x2. So this is step number one. Then second component of formulation is called objective function. Now the objective function can be of two types. If the problem is a profit question, then the objective function is maximization and then it is represented as max z. Objective function is represented by capital letter Z. So if it is a profit question, objective function will be max Z. If it is a cost related question, objective function will be minimization and it is called min Z. Okay, so you should remember that objective function is of two types, either maximization or minimization. Maximization is represented by max Z, minimization is represented by min Z. Now in our given question, if you read the profit per unit is given. So now profit data is given. So objective function will be max it. This is the left hand side of objective function. The right hand side of objective function is represented in terms of variables x1 and x2. Now how to identify that? See, we have two products alpha and beta. Alpha is represented by x1, beta is represented by x2. And the profit per unit is rupees 100 and rupees 150. So profit of alpha is 100, profit of beta is 150. This is the profit of one unit. How many units we are going to produce? We are going to produce x1 units of alpha. So total profit of alpha will be 100 into x1. So that is 100 x1. And total profit of beta will be 150 into x2. That is 150 x2. So when we add this, we get our total profit z. So max z value will be. 100x1 plus 150x2. Okay, this is how we identify the objective function. Okay, so now uh, we have seen how to make, how to identify the decision variables. We also seen how to write the objective function. Now the third component or third part of formulation is called constraints. Constraints are the limitations or restrictions imposed on the question. Now we can identify here, say there are two resources, one is machine hours and second is labor hours. Now whatever data related with resources is given, we will convert in a table format. So we will say that there are two products, alpha and beta, and we have two resources, one is machine and second is labor. Now if you read the question, one unit of alpha requires 15 machine hours. So we will say here 15. Now alpha is represented by x1, beta is represented by 
x two. One unit of alpha requires fifteen machine hours and ten labor hours. One unit of beta requires five machine hours and twenty five labor hours. And the total availability is given. So this is the limit. The availability of resources is given. The availability of machine hours is three hundred units. And availability of labor hours is seven fifty. Now this is the limit imposed on the question. Okay, so how do we represent this now? How do we interpret this? That one unit of alpha requires 15 machine hours and 10 labor hours. One unit of beta requires 5 machine hours and 25 labor hours. And total availability of machine and labor is given as 300 and 750. Now we will convert this in a constraint format. Now every constraint has two sides, LHS and RHS. The left hand side of the constraint. This is the LHS. It will be represented in terms of x1 and x2, and the limit that is given to us, that is the RHS, that is the right hand side, the availability. Okay. Now first, so we will write here constraint number one, constraint number two. Now we will first write the RHS. Okay. First constraint is for machine, and second constraint is for labor. We will first write the RHS. Machine RHS is 300, and labor RHS is 750. Now we have to write the left hand side. Now again, see, one unit of alpha requires 15, but how many total units of alpha we have? X1. So total consumption is how much? 15 into X1. So for alpha, consumption is 15 into X1. Consumption of machine. And for beta, how much is the consumption of machine hours? Five per unit multiplied by x2, so 15 x1 plus 5 x2. And for labor, consumption of labor for alpha is 10 multiplied by x1, so 10 x1 plus for beta it is 25 multiplied by x2, so 25 x2. Now the important thing is since this is an equation, we have to decide the sign of the equation. Now there can be Two signs, either less than or equal to, or greater than or equal. How to identify which sign for which constraint? So the simple rule is: this limit that is given to us. If the limit is upper limit or maximum limit, then the sign should be less than or equal. Now this is the upper limit because capacity or availability. Availability is how much? 300. So it is the maximum limit. So it means the sign of the constraint will be less than or equal. For both machine as well as labor, but if this limit is the lower limit or the minimum limit, then the sign of the constraint will be reverse. It will be greater than or equal to. So this is something you should remember how to decide the sign of the constraint. If the limit given in the question, limit means the right hand side. If the limit is upper limit or highest limit or maximum limit, sign should be less than or equal to. If this limit is a lower limit or minimum limit, sign should be greater than or equal to. Okay. So now, if we check this formulation, now this is our formulation. If we check this formulation with our data, we should see whether all information is properly represented. We will just verify. See, how many products are there? Two, alpha and beta. So there are two decision variables, alpha and beta. So yes, this is correct. Then, objective function. Objective function. Profit is given. Yes, so it is max set, and how much is profit per unit? Rupees hundred and rupees one fifty. So it is hundred and one fifty. So yes, it is correct. And then the last part that is the constraint. The constraints. There are two resources. One is machine hours, and one is labor hours. So yes, there are two constraints. One for machine, one for labor. Now one unit of alpha requires fifteen machine hours. So it is fifteen x one, and one unit of alpha also requires ten labor hours. So It is 10x1. So this is consumption of alpha. Okay. So here yeah, for 15 and 10 that we have represented in the table. And consumption of beta that is 5 machine hours and 25 labor hours. So it is yes, it is 5 and 25 as represented in the table. So it is always advisable that whatever data is given, you convert that in the table. Then it will be easy to write the constraint. And how do we identify the sign? So I repeat, if this limit. Is the upper limit or maximum limit? The sign should be less than. Availability is the upper limit or maximum limit, so the sign of the constraint is less than. 
here also the limit is for labor the limit is availability so upper limit or maximum limit so here also psi will be less than so this is what we call formulation of LP. after this at the end we write one constant more as a formality it is called non negativity that is x1 comma x2 greater than or equal to 0 it means that the values of x1 and x2 cannot be negative because they are the variables and variables have to be positive okay or zero but variable values cannot be negative that is why after we complete the formulation at the end as a formality we write one more constraint that is called non negativity and this is a common constraint for our formulations okay so our main formulation is this this much is our main formulation and this is a formality constraint okay Okay, now we will do one more question for NPP formulation of a different type. The two vitamins A and B are recommended for children in minimum quantity of 60 mg and 80 mg per day. The vitamins are found in two food supplements F1 and F2. Cost per unit of F1 and F2 is rupees 50 and rupees 75. One unit of F1 contains 5 units of A and 10 units of B. One unit of F2 contains 10 units of A and 20 units of B, formulate as FPP. Now, as we have seen, the first step in formulation is decision variables. So, we will say FPP formulation first is decision variables. Now your, the question is whether we should take A and B as decision variables or F1 and F2 as decision variables. Now if you read the question you will see cost per unit is given for F1 and F2. It means F1 and F2 are our decision variables because cost is given for F1 and F2. So we should say X1 is equal to number of units of F1 and X2 is equal to number of units of F2. Decision variables are always represented as capital X. Okay. Then the second step is to write the objective function. Now like we have done in the first question, we have two pro four supplements or two products F1 and F2 and cost is given. Cost is given for F1 and F2 it is 50 and 75 so and F1 is represented by X1 F2 is represented by X2 ok now cost is given so it is minimization so now objective function will be mean Z because you want to minimize the cost so mean Z equal to now 50 per unit and total units are X1 so total cost of F1 is 50 X1 and 75 per unit and total units x2 so for f2 total cost is 75 x2 so we will add this you will get total cost so it means objective function is means and equal to 50 x1 plus 75 x2 and third step is constraints constraints are the limitations of the problem now See here, it is given two vitamins A and B and minimum quantity is 60 and 80. So constraints are given for A and B. Now we will say convert the data in a table format. Two foods, F1, F2 and two vitamins A and B and the limit is given 
the minimum quantity is given minimum quantity for a is 60 and minimum quantity for b is 80 so this is the data given and then one unit of f1 one here it is given one unit of f1 contains five units of a and 10 units of b and one unit of f2 contains 10 units of a and 20 units of b so now this is the LHS of the constraint and the limit that is given is the RHS of the constraint, right hand side. So now we will write the constraints. First constraint, first constraint is for vitamin A, second constraint is for vitamin B. The right hand side for A is 60, so RHS is 60, right hand side for B is 80. Okay, this is the right hand side. Left hand side, F1 is represented by X1, F2 is represented by X2. So now for first 5 into X1, per unit it is 5 and total units are X1. So 5 X1 plus 10 X2, 10 into X2. And for second constraint it is 10 into X1 plus 20 into X2. Now we have to decide the sign of the constraint. Okay, now in first question we have seen that if the limit is maximum limit, then the sign is less than. And if the limit is minimum limit, then the sign is greater than. Now in this example, the minimum quantity is prescribed. Okay, it is mentioned that the minimum quantity of A and B should be 60 and 80. So since minimum limit is given, the sign will be greater than or equal to. Okay, now our formulation is complete. And in the end, as a formality, we will write non negativity constraint x1, x2 greater than or equal to 0. It means the variables should not be negative. Okay, so now this our formulation is complete. Let us verify the data once again. So we will verify the formulation with given data. Two products F1 and F2. Okay, two products F1 and F2 are there. Cost is given. So since cost is given, objective function is mean Z, and the cost is 50 and 75. So cost is 50 and 75. And then we converted the data in table format. One unit of F1 contains five units of A, ten units of B. One F2 contains ten units of A, twenty units of B. The limits for A and B are 60 and 80. The limit is minimum limit. So therefore, the sign of the constraint is greater. Okay. Now, our formulation is complete.